ladies and gentlemen, J.R. Reidinger. The hardest working man on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your founder, your chairman, your CEO, J.R. Reidinger. Wow. Okay, you ready to have some fun? <laughs> this is my favorite part. <laughs> uh, this is what I love to do. You know, uh, with this group up here that's the million dollar earners, we used to have a ULT, yeah. upper level training. We're gonna start doing them again, but it was 13 hours straight of me barking at them. <laughs> you know, I was in the bathroom one time and the guy in the stall next to me said, man, that guy sure can talk. <laughs> but, uh, I'm gonna do 13 hours in two hours. And uh, we're gonna have some, you know, some fun. I'm gonna go fast. You're gonna be able to get the PowerPoint and the video and the audio, so you can go back and, and study. I want you to know, I very humbly submit to you that I think I know what I'm doing. You're all under me. I say that respectfully, though. And those that know, when I work with them, it, it's important to me. I don't treat it lightly. Um, it's not bragging. It's just a fact. I only present the fact to let you know that I know something that you don't. Otherwise, you would have this type of organization, right? Okay, so that's it. So, the name of this uh, seminar is The Method to the Madness. Yeah. Because there really is a method, a science to it. It looks very confusing. There's a lot of stuff coming at you. And you need to figure it out if you want to rise to the top. And the whole business comes down to this simple formula. Time <laughs> equals, <laughs> somehow it got an arrow going up. That's supposed to be an equal sign. Time equals growth equals volume. I know what it is. It didn't pick up exponents. <laughs> you ever do that? At any rate, the, the, the quality of your time. So you, you just don't all of a sudden make money. You got to put time in. Everybody agree with that? You, you don't put money in. If you put a half million dollars or a million dollars into the business, what would it do for it? Not very much, I mean, what's it gonna do? You gotta put time in, do you agree with that? The great equalizer. So your investment is in time. So it's the quality of time, how you spend that time, and we can define that very specifically, okay, that determines how much growth you're going to get. But it's not a multiplier, it's an exponent. It multiplies itself. The greater the quality of time by using certain things, the greater the growth, people getting in. And the objective is for that to duplicate. So when we translate time, quality time, into growth that duplicates, we get volume. Now, we didn't have this other stuff when we did it. We had to do everything one person at a time, you know, manually. But now today we have multipliers. First of all, I talked about the shopping annuity yesterday. I hope that you're st starting to get it. But that is an exponent. It takes the MPCP to MPCP squared. It multiplies itself. And then with the digital age and social media and all the digital tools and all the tracking mechanisms, you can actually cube it because we can handle a hundred people at one time and we used to have to do them one at a time. Do you understand that? But none of it matters unless you got MPCP one right first. <laughs> the fundamentals of building the business. So at any rate, uh, 
everybody thinks that you got to be smart to build a business, and that you need to find smart people. That's a misnomer. But would you agree that's generally what the assumption is? And I found that the smart people have the most difficulty building this because they spend all their time figuring out how everything won't work. That one will catch you on the way home. So if you're dumb, it might be to your advantage if you listen. <laughs> uh, but I love this story. I've been telling it for years. You know, of the smartest man in the world back in the 70s, 80s was supposedly Henry Kissinger because he was able to solve all types of problems that nobody else could seemingly solve, even though it didn't work later. <laughs> so he was uh, rushed out of the UN in New York to LaGuardia Airport to catch a private plane to San Francisco to meet with the Chinese delegation. And so his, uh, his limo screeched up to the airplane at the same time two other limos screeched up at the same time. Somehow the computer had messed up and booked a famous hippie rock star, a famous evangelist clergyman, and Henry Kissinger, the smartest man in the world, on the same plane. Well, you know, they were out front discussing their dilemma, and finally they decided to put their big egos aside and all get on the plane together because there wasn't time to book another one. So the plane took off, it got halfway across the country, and wouldn't you know, it started to develop engine trouble. And it started rumbling and smoking, finally the pilot burst into the cabin, he said, we got a problem. He said, this plane's going down. He said, but that's not half our problem. <laughs> we were only expecting one other on here. We carry three parachutes. Me being the captain, I'm a taking one. <laughs> Out he went. Three, <laughs> three people left, two parachutes. Henry Kissinger wasted no time. He slowly rose. He said, well, being that I'm the smartest man in the world, I'm sure you all realize it would be a great loss to society if I went down with this airplane. Therefore, I must take one of the two remaining parachutes, and you may decide your destiny uh, between you. Out went Henry. Well, the clergyman rose. He said, son, I'm a man of God. It looks like you need a little more time. I'm willing and ready to meet my creator. And, you know, the hippie got up. The rock star swinging his chair. He says, hey, baby, don't worry about it. The smartest man in the world just jumped out of this airplane with my knapsack. There's <laughs> one left for each of us. <laughs> you know? So the moral of the story is the smartest people don't always make it. Sometimes they jump to conclusions. And you just got to stay on board long enough to get the answer. And when you get the answer, jump with both feet. Don't be afraid. So that's important. Now, did you ever notice how people are? Uh, those of us that get in think the ones that didn't get in are dumb. And the ones that didn't get in think we, the ones that did get in, are dumb. And then when you start building the business, the newbie thinks that the senior partner is dumb. And the senior partner knows that the newbie is dumb. <laughs> so who's the dumber one? Well, you know, it reminds me of the story of uh, the athletic, uh, the university athletic office, the football coach and the basketball coach are arguing over who has the dumber athlete. And the football coach says, I got one so dumb he can't even tie his shoes. He can't even remember his name. Oh, the basketball player who coaches, I got a dumber one. I mean, you know, <laughs> th th this guy can't even tie his shoes. I said, well, they argued for 30 minutes and they decided to bring it down to a wager. And the football coach said, watch this. Hey, Big George, come on in here. Big tackle comes r running in, boom, boom, his shoulders hit the door jab. He says, yes, sir. Coach flipped him a court, says, Big George, go buy me a Cadillac with that. Takes the court, he says, well, yes, sir. He runs off. The football coach is pounding on the table. He says, that's not the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I'm, I give him a quarter and he thinks he can buy a Cadillac. The basketball coach said, that's nothing. He said, watch this. Hey, Billy boy, come on in here. Big lanky uh, center comes running through. Boom, hits his head on the door. Yes, sir. 
He said, Billy, go up to my office and see if I'm there. <laughs> Billy said, uh, uh, yes, sir. And he ran back out. Meanwhile, the coaches are pounding on the table, arguing over who had the dumber athlete who won. Meanwhile, the football player and the basketball player met on the elevator. And the football player said, you know, my coach been hit one time too many. Well, that dumb bunny gave me a quarter to buy his, him a Cadillac, didn't even tell me what color he wanted. <laughs> you know, and the, the basketball coach said, that ain't nothing. You know, my coach, if my coach sent me up to his office to see who was there, the dumb bunny had a telephone, could have found out for himself. <laughs> so who's the dumber one? All I know is that we know what works. And I'm going to show you what works. And, you know, so <laughs> this is how I build it. Directly or indirectly, this is why you're here. Uh, we started out just like you, with a few people in a room, and I thought they'd all get in because of the miraculous genius breakthrough of this binomial system in the MPCP. You know, one guy looked like a rat died in his mouth. Other guy looked like his underwear was too tight, <laughs> you know. And they weren't really that receptive. So I understand what you go through. Uh, but it's come a long way. <coughs> so, you know, uh, th this is the method to the madness, how you hit levels and duplicate people hitting levels quickly. We had nothing. We had to memorize the plan and draw it out. We had no flip chart, no tools. We, I'm saying me and my pioneer team. And we did it together, and, and they, there was nothing to believe in. But my passion. Dennis, after I showed him the plan, he said, I've never seen anybody so passionate or crazy. He said, I don't know what the heck you're talking about, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> and we built. Okay, so there's a method of the madness. In fact, it's actually a science. And we did it with nothing. You have everything. So I'm going to do a little brain surgery on you today. You know, <coughs> when I used to fly publicly or whatever you call it, uh, commercially, commercially, yeah, I, I don't do that anymore because it increases the quality of my time. But at any rate, uh, it was funny, when you got in first class, it was kind of like a ceremony. Immediately, some, the person sitting next to you would turn and say, hello, my name is, what do you do? And I would always say, well, I'm a part-time brain surgeon. That's interesting. Part-time? Yeah, part-time. I said, would you like me to operate on your thinking now? I mean, I had them for two hours, right? So I pull out my trusty little, what are they going to do, jump out of the tube? <laughs> I pull out my little trusty flip chart <laughs> and go through the program and do some brain surgery. Well, you know, really in the business, we are doing brain surgery. We are operating on people's thinking. Okay? We're moving their thinking to what was not possible before to what is possible now. And um, so I do a little brain surgery on you. And... Uh, but this is what determines the level and the speed of your growth, you know? And we can change the way people shop. You have to be possessed by what we are and what, where we're going. Nobody else has a solution. Ask them. They say, you actually have a solution, you know, and where the company is headed is ahead of the curve, leading the parade. So it really comes down to belief and knowledge, knowing enough and believing enough because you know enough that you exude confidence, you see. So I really believe we can change the way people shop. Give me a reason we can't, you know. Uh, we can redefine the global economic system where average people, poor people, rich people can all, you know, rich people are basically chained to the enterprise they're in. They're married to it. Or a, a doctor can't stop doing it. Or how people die, and if he does stop, he's not going to make any money. <laughs> you know, so on. 
In the shopping annuity, we can convert spending into earning, an absolutely revolutionary concept that'll change the world, hands down. I mean, that's just the way it is. And um, so the four C's in the ABC pattern make the MPCP cube itself. And it actually is real. That's why some people just grow like mad and others trickle along, but they put the same amount of time in. So that's what you're here to learn. You ready? Hmm? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna show you how to do what I know best. Build the business, get it going, hit pin levels, get out of my way, you know? So I want you to know that this is the exact same presentation that I would give to these guys every year. These are the slides. Do you remember these? Okay. And these are the slides. Now, with HTLM and all the cool stuff out today on PowerPoint, we updated them. But it's the same stuff. So I was listening to some people from Great Britain and then some people in the U.S. saying that they listened to the basic five, the original, and it, what it did to them was mess them up. I mean, they, 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 got, they got it. I said, I gotta go back and listen to this. What did I say? So it was the original basic five when Dennis had 500 people at a meeting in his first month, and I said, this ain't gonna work because there's no duplication, there's no follow-up. And of course, he was disappointed by the number of people he got out versus the results. I said, Dennis, Kevin, Kevin was on the B level. This is have a coring. First time the word was used. We'll pull the, the key people together. There's, there's a way of doing this that I know works. And it, so it was at a golf club, uh, Jaworski's Golf Club. Eagle's Nest or something, and we, uh, maybe 10 people in the room, put a microphone in a glass, you can hear it jingling and whatnot, and, and I told how we do this. The basic five fundamentals of the business that must all be happening at once in order to rise and hit UFO levels and make more and more money, and to duplicate. And it's basically this formula. And it's amazing to me, when I listen to it, it's exactly, 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 exactly the same thing we, did that we do now. At least we do it. So you might want to take your phone out and take a picture of that. Because you can then go pull it up. It's got the link, right? And uh, take a listen. So it starts out, it's all about filling the funnel and the bean jar faster, faster. Not just two beans in there and shake it. Fill it up first, okay? Um, I'll explain that later today. It's about getting off of the treadmill. Don't keep doing the same thing that doesn't work more in order to get ahead. You need to get off of that treadmill and do what works. Okay, so. Uh, that's what most people do, right? And it's actually hard to get off of the treadmill. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. So if you think, this, listen to this one now. You don't want to keep doing that. If you think the same thing, you'll do the same thing, and you'll get the same result. You don't like your result, you got to change something. So insanity, I love the definition, is doing the same thing, expecting to get the same, uh, getting a different result. You keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. Are you here to have a breakthrough? Well, you have to have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough. So, you know, so, <laughs> therefore you must change your thinking. It's 90% mental, believe me. Um, and here's another thing where you can, you get off the hook. You can forgive yourself. 
Do you know that you don't know what you don't know? You don't even know that you don't know it. <laughs> so it's not your fault until I tell it to you. They all knew it because I told it to them, and look what they did. Maybe that's the difference between you and them. Because um, I, I know they're not that smart. I mean, I did it with them, <laughs> you know. Uh, so the difference between, now listen, people go to Tony Robbins seminars. They go to all types of self-help things. They go to all types of self-improvement things, seeking the answer. What is the key to success? I'm going to give it to you all in one sentence. The difference between success and failure is simple. The individual who succeeds did what the individual who failed did not do. Doesn't even matter why. They made it, you didn't yet. Yet. So I would want to know what they did, what we did. Okay, so we as a company are ahead of the curve, leading the parade. You really understand that, I hope. We are different. Um, we're the best. There's no, you know, that, you, anybody want to get in a bad mouth contest with me? Because I'm going to whip your ass. Because I know what we got. So, you know, we can change the way people shop. Something so powerful that we can redefine the global economy. The shopping annuity is something that is going to revolutionize retirement. It's going to revolutionize finance. I mean, it, it's digital aggregation that prevents them from keeping us separate so that they can finish us. And we can go all the way up working together. So it's through entrepreneurial opportunity at the grassroots, see my whole belief is, at the grassroots level of this country, nobody's going to help you. The government's full of SHIT. They don't have the ability to it, and they, they, they increase the money supply so much, if things get productive, inflation's going to go to 30%. You can change it if you have the vehicle, you know? So your president of your own life, you know? People say, who are you voting for? I say, I ain't telling you, but I don't really care. Because the same result will be with either one. I'm creating my own economy. Uh, I don't depend on them anyway. Uh, so, see these things? These are the dimensions that make us powerful. Look at them. You can read faster than I can speak. But these elements are so crucial to why we are better and why you have magic in your hands. You could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a business and it could not hold a candle to this and you don't even have to spend the money but you won't do it. I mean, you buy a bit, you know, to, to, to make $100,000 a year, the rule of thumb is the business costs five times the net. So you're going to invest a lot of money, and there's 24 hours a day until you go into business for yourself, because you're, you're never off. And so you got this that doesn't require the money, where you can make more than another business, and you end up being free rather than married and enslaved to the business. So where are you going to find something better? You've claimed all your life, if only I had a chance. And then you're given it, and what do you do with it? Well, you got to believe in those things before it's going to happen, you see? You have to understand. You have to know. And with that knowledge, you need to believe. But the only thing better than believing who was it that said, I think Fat Joe said the other day, faith is a funny thing. It means you're not in control because you have to depend on faith. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But the only thing better than believing is knowing. Do you know? See, because when you know, it's going to, okay, so here's the formula. It doesn't matter 
Everybody doing the business, whether they're conscious, unconscious, dedicated, not dedicated, this is a formula that controls the outcome. You put time in, and the exponent Q defines what that time results in. Quality time or wasted time. You, so two people can put in 20 hours a week each. One can get phenomenal results, and the other can get no results. So you have to know what quality time is. You can't have growth without putting time in. Does everybody agree with that? So if you know what quality time is, the growth will also exponentially duplicate. Because the time we put in this quality time was directed at creating growth that would duplicate. So the exponent Q is a way approximately equal to the exponent D. It multiplies itself by that amount. Multiplies itself. So you see, time is a great equalizer, isn't it? We all have 24 hours a day. I remember when I was a little younger and I wanted to borrow money to do big things. Nobody would loan it to me. Today, I have all the money that I need, self-financing, and I want to borrow time. But you can't borrow time. You can't borrow it. So you better make the time count, man. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's like Frank always says, it's later than you think. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 30 days a month or four weeks a month, it's actually 4.2 if you want to know, but 52 weeks a year, 365 uh, days a year. So how many years? OPC3 and R products, you might get a little more. But basically, we can turn the hourglass upside down. Nobody has that ability. I live more in one year than most of you live in 40. It's not how many breaths you take, it's how many moments take your breath away. See? So we can reverse that. And it all comes down to this. The first one is the basic five duplication by using quality time and knowing what creates quality time so that the growth that you produce duplicates. I will not do anything that will not duplicate. I have to do everything right, not because I have to, but because somebody's with me and I gotta make sure that it duplicates right because I don't wanna have to do it over. You know, uh, the limiting factor and problem is that we have limited time uh, or we run out of time, right? And uh, the, uh, the growth, to grow faster, we have to increase the quality of our time <laughs> so that the resulting growth duplicates. Does, you know, do you understand that? You put time in to get people, but putting the time in right gets more people and the right people and when it starts to grow, you're gonna make sure that you're doing the things that duplicate. Um, I mean, I, quite frankly, I'm very anal about this because it's that important. Um, you know, so at any rate, I'm rough on people. Any good coach is. But I don't wanna waste my time, and I'm hoping that they don't wanna waste their time. You know, so it's working smarter, smarter than harder. You know? Uh, what are some of the factors that determine quality time? Okay, well, Q is the quality of time and it's an exponent and it's determined by very well, easily definable factors. You're either doing them or you're not doing them, okay? So you have to work with go nows. You're always gonna have go nows, waiting, and stable people. You can't change that. It's been like that forever, okay? The trap is when we spend time with the wrong people. 
See, our timing becomes dependent on their timing decreasing the exponent Q. Okay, so uh, when your timing becomes dependent on somebody else's timing, and they may be a great person. I'm not judging them at all. They get absorbed by something else. I mean, they're doing great things for the church, you know, or they're doing great things politically, or they're off on some crusade. Fine. They get sick. They die. They have, uh, uh, they lose their job. They fall in love. They get, break up. All types of stuff happens to people all the time. It's not your fault, but you can't make your time dependent on their time if you really want to grow. And so when you add the shopping annuity members, the shopping annuity master member uh, to the formula, it multiplies the V volume four to eight times when it duplicates and squares. It means it, it multiplies itself, times itself. Um, you know, here, let me give you an example, because I love this one. Because, you know, you can have theories and hypotheses, and you can know you're right, but there's nothing like the facts that back it up. The proof is in the pudding. So one of the biggest problems in this business, and everybody has experienced it, is an atrophied leg. Something happens timing-wise, and somebody that you were counting on to hit pen levels uh, has something happen in their life. It's not that they go negative, not necessarily quit, but they get absorbed by something else. A divorce, a marriage, a baby, you know, uh, a, a, a loser job. I mean, you know, it distracts them. Sometimes it's very positive things. They're on some great campaign or mission. Fine, they're absorbed by something else. They, don't, they keep doing some volume, but you are dependent on them to get to the next level. Now, when you do it, the business, the same way the, the, that, I, that I'm teaching today, but use the shopping annuity, there's a miracle. It's a solution to atrophy. Because they got on the shopping annuity. They spent the time, invested the time to do it. They're saving money. They, they've experienced it. They feel it. It's, it, I mean, it, they get addicted. So they're doing 500 BV and, you know, buying everything, 3,000 or whatever from shop.com, and they're happy because they're saving money and they're accruing volume. So something goes wrong, and they get distracted. The volume doesn't go down. They did the work to get there. They're saving money. They have more customers because what's that becomes broader. And we're only using one thing before to get a what's that. And so when they get distracted or absorbed, okay, uh, the amazing thing is the volume doesn't atrophy. And they're saving money. For, in fact, to tell you the truth, it's probably harder to get off of it than it is to get on it. <laughs> Why go to the trouble? Because you're winning. Do you understand that? That is a really, really huge thing. Because <laughs> it is a big problem, isn't it? It's the one thing that trips us. So, goodbye to that one. Okay, so at any rate, there's always going to be three types of people. Go now, are passionate and dedicated to mastering the basic five, filling the funnel and shaking the bean jar, calling two people per week, which was your contract when you started. We said, here's a two to three year plan. Here's the result producing activities. You got to make a list of 100 people. Go to the Getting Started Guide and look at it. You got to make a list of 100 people. You start out with 20. We'll do the meetings for you, trial run. You'll get some people in. But every week, you're going to call two people to evaluate it because they might know the right people. For 52 weeks, which is 104 people, you're only supposed to do 100. You can send four back. <laughs> Stable. They're active. They remain active. They buy products. They have some customers. They come to a meeting or local once in a while. And you can irritate them, motivate them, push them, love them, hate them, and it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. I'm still here. I'm still here. And they're the backbone of the business. We don't want that volume to go away. But I don't spend time 
pushing the cart up the hill. I plug them into the system. And I guarantee you, something will happen as long as you keep them plugged in that'll change the situation. Something happens on their job, something happens in their life, and all of a sudden they're ready to go. And then I'm back on it. And they're waiting, or some people just signed them up. They, they don't really know what they're in, but they, you know, they, they, uh, they still do some volume. Uh, and along, they're just along for the ride. Yeah, I'm in that thing. <laughs> You're in that thing? Yeah, I've signed up. I'm one of them UFO things, <laughs> you know. And they, they get some product at wholesale, and they love the product. Every once in a while, they do a little, little bit. Okay, and it's wonderful. We love them too. Um, so how do I handle each one of them? Well, go now, I'm all over it and I'm gonna be working under them. In fact, I make it work before they have to decide anything. And then we go for it, we start doing the ABC pattern. Stable, I plug them into the system, the meeting system, and I stay in communication with them. Believe me, when somebody comes in under them, that's your chance. That's your director. I gotta tell you something, I did not know Dennis Franks at all. I knew about him, he was a legend in his own time, and most people are a legend in their own mind. <laughs> but a fraternity brother knew a pharmacist who knew a hockey player for the Flyers, who knew somebody else, who knew somebody else, and Dennis came to a real estate office. And uh, so if I didn't go, from person to person to person, I would never have found Dennis Franks. You think? Uh, so yeah. And I didn't know Elizabeth Weber. I knew a couple of hucksters. <laughs> oh, man, they were hucksters. You know, uh, they tried to undermine me and pull a mutiny, and they started a company. It lasted two years. And they said, we're gonna make a lot more money than you. Well, they're broke selling cars and stuff like that. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you how I'm doing. <laughs> but at uh, any rate, they led to somebody, led to somebody, I, these guys, I can't remember their names, but they're funny as all heck. And they led to Bobby Kanata. And Bobby Kanata knew that, knew that Elizabeth Weber was a MLM junkie. <laughs> She tried everything. Yeah, and boy, but when I got her, I irritated her to the point that she broke. She went crazy. But the point is, I didn't know them. Are you getting this? So every person's a doorway to the person that's gonna do it. You see, that's how you do it. Okay, so um, at any rate. The technique of what we do is exactly the same as it was 25 years ago. But we didn't have these other things. So you got to get the technique on MPCP1 right first, because you can make substantial money. It's a multiplication model, okay? You can't but make so much doing anything if you're exchanging time for money. You need a mechanism that duplicates, do you understand that? You're not gonna get rich on one McDonald's. You need 20 of them. <laughs> you understand? It's true in everything. Walmart doesn't have one store. You, you get the, the picture? So it doesn't cost you anything to duplicate. Um, so you add the shopping annuity to that, it squares it. It multiplies itself. I mean that mathematically. If, you want, if you're a mathematician, you want to have the exercise, I'll do it with you. In a digital age, when you can do what it, you had to do in time-wise with one person at a time, with a hundred at a time or a thousand at a time, you can cube it. But you got to get MPCP1 right first. Is this making sense? Is it? So the Q exponent multiplies the result 
times, making the time count exponentially. And the quality of D, the exponent of duplication, multiplies the growth time itself by the number of the power of the quantity Q. Now, it's hard to measure Q exactly or precisely numerically, but we can approximate it. Um, and by making time count and leverage duplicating growth results in uh, magic, you know, magically creating time. You actually created time. I heard uh, White is talking about it today. You can do 16 days in one day, you see. Um, so it equals the resulting multiple of growth uh, through duplication D determined by Q. And uh, the higher the power Q, don't waste my time. Because the power of Q is the key to wealth. Don't forget that. And you can actually control it. So here's some examples. For those of you that are non-mathematicians, people who have mental blocks about things like math. Now, I have a bunch of my, uh, my team and relatives say, ah, I don't like, I don't understand algebra, I don't like it. Say, so any question that you don't know the answer to, I can figure out algebraically, including the marketing plan. So, ha ha. <laughs> you know? So, 10 to the, 10 squared, 10 to the, the, the second power. That means 10 times 10 or 100. The, that, that's pretty significant. Now, 100 uh, squared, so in other words, quality of time squared, growth squared, it's like 100 times 100, all of a sudden that 100 becomes 10,000. 10,000 squared is 10,000 times 10,000 or 100,000. See, Einstein once said, the greatest miracle of the world is exponential growth, which is basically what the theory of relativity is fundamentally based on. But 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000. And 1,000 cubed is 100 million. So do you get it? So it's very important to understand the Q and the D because we're all going to put time in and we're all going to get some growth. Okay, so watch this. Q exponent multiplies itself, examples of exponents. Binomial system, two get four, get 16, I mean get eight, get 16, gets 32, 64, get 120. Now the problem with that exponential binomial or binary growth pattern is you got to fill out horizontal levels sequentially and symmetrically in order for those numbers to work. That's why we search the infinite debt. Infinite debt, because we don't need to depend on that. It'll go wherever the water flows in the path of least resistance and eventually find that director. But by the same time, if you're putting 15 hours of time in and it's squared, 15 squared is 225 hours they were talking about. It. So if I apply all of the elements that increase the quality of time, my 15 hours a week can actually be 225 hours a week. That's the difference between you and me. That's uh, only one. I mean, these guys know me. I'm a scallywag, you know. I'm not, I'm, you know, kind of guttural, uh, flamboyant. I have fun. I don't care what you think. You know, I'm not politically correct. <laughs> you know, so what? Uh, so at any rate, MPCP1, Q is a key reflecting D, 15 hours is 225 hours. D is a high multiplying volume person. And, uh, uh, and the rate they add people is much greater than other people. So if the volume, so if I, if I have D20 people in and it's squaring itself, they're doing the work and are quickly going to become 400 people, okay? If uh, the volume is 500 and it squares itself, 
within three to nine months, I'm going to have 250,000 volume. You don't think, you don't believe it? This room and you are living proof of it. This whole thing started out with me and four people. Okay, so at any rate, exponent Q multiplies itself. Pay attention to it because D multiplies itself. And overnight, you can blow up the field vice president from nowhere. Overnight, all the way up. They can't stop us now. You know? So prospecting, recruiting, and sponsoring personally uh, uh, and constantly duplicating uh, that with those who work with it. Now, here's a big one. Pay attention. Don't let your mind wander. One of the biggest problems for most people is they forget one element and one codicil of the agreement of you getting in and the two to three year plan working. We said, you have to make a list of 100 possibilities. The average person knows 300 people through acquaintances, things they're associated in, pe people they do things with that they could call up right now and ask them to evaluate it in case they know the right people. Just make that list. Start out with 20. Focus on 20. Invite them to a trial run. And when I show the plan, or, 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 or Whited show the plan, or Dennis shows the plan, or Frank Kiefer shows the plan, they're going to get in. You agree? So they get in, and you call me up and say, I activated! Oh, no. It's over. <laughs> I activated! Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I didn't have enough time to get to more people before you activated. You say, oh. so it's done. It's like uh, getting a seat in a race car, and they, they throw the flag, the gun goes off, and you wheel out and stall out. The race just began. <laughs> two a week, two a week. Two people to evaluate it. Why? Because I don't want to count on those first two. Would you take the first two people that walked in the door to a million-dollar business that you bought to be the vice presidents or presidents, or would you interview more? You don't know until you know. They say, you take the first two that come through the door, right? So I make them go through a tryout, and when those, uh, and, and I'm going to keep doing it, because look, watch this, two a week. You know how much time it takes you to go to work? and how hard you work, huh? I mean, it's really hard. It's working a job hard. I mean, it kills you. You know, it's just not the eight hours on the job where you get blamed for everything that goes wrong and no credit for anything that goes right. It's driving there, it's, you know, it's traffic. It, it, it's hard. Now, how hard is this? It's called two people a week, not a day. A week off that list, two, and ask them to evaluate it because they might know the right people. How hard is that? Two times 52 weeks is 104. Now, I don't care how bad you are at the business. You have no confidence, you, you get locked jaw, you get mentally constipated, trying to say something, you just can't quite get it out. And you stink if you really want to know. But I don't care if you do two a week or 52 weeks, the worst person in the business will end up with eight go nows. I know this from 40 years of experience. Eight. Say so eight, four on the left, four on the right, underneath the person that you activated with. And now I got teams to work the ABC pattern with. Now what happens if you don't do that? This is the catch. This is the catch. This is why you are where you are right now and are not happy about it. They duplicate you. They only get two. And some of those two fizzle. And they only get two. But when you keep, they know that you're not sponsoring. They're at the meetings with you. When you keep doing two, 
and you have four down below and four down below, man, it creates excitement, and we're, we're making it happen. And then they do the same thing, and they do the same thing, and they do the same thing. When you look at the numbers, at the end of the year, it is impossible not to be an executive director. Virtually, mathematically impossible. So take that one out of your excuse bag. I better go back. So these are the 10 things. What happened? I screwed it up. Okay, four of the four C's. We're gonna go into this. How do you make your quality time higher? Four C's. What are they? Counselings, corings, cross-pollination, and combinations. Now, how many people know what they are? I guarantee you at least 80% of the people in this room do not know what they are. That's why you have the 80-20% rule. Because it's a key to increasing the quality and value of your time so that it multiplies duplication. Um, you know, so, and, and by the way, I skipped over basic five. I mean, that's so automatic. But you think you're doing the basic five. Fundamentally, you know, Vince Lombardi said, I don't care what your playbook is, the team that eventually will always prevail and win is the one that does the fundamentals of blocking and tackling better. So true. So if you're not doing all five, you know, the development of attitude and knowledge, okay, uh, retailing, uh, spon uh, pros prospecting and sponsoring, uh, the ABC pattern and follow up. What did I leave out? Oh, goals. If you don't have goals, why don't you just fold up now? You're wasting your time. But, okay, so at any rate, all five of those going at, at once. So a lot of you think that you, oh, I do that because you kind of know what they are. Take the diagnostic test. Do yourself a favor. You're going to make some discoveries of some things that you're not doing that'll make you feel a lot better when you do them because you're going to get results. It's that missing peak. You, you can't figure out what's wrong with the car engine. You need to put it on an analyzer. Find out where it's losing efficiency. And then you can make it happen. Okay, well, I'm going to spend too much time on these things. Prospecting, I like doing this, though. Can you tell? <laughs> Prospecting, recruiting, and sponsoring. Uh, okay, so prospecting, people talk about recruiting. There's no such thing as recruiting. It's prospecting with possibilities, develop people that have interests that recruit you. And when they recruit you, I make it work before they have to make a decision in case something goes wrong, I got the person that will do it. And then the big job comes in, sponsoring. You are now married to them. You cannot have a baby and set it out on the steps and expect it to survive. It needs to be fed. It needs to be diaper changed. It needs all of those things that a baby needs. But then it gets to the point where you spend two years getting it to talk, and then you can't get it to shut up. <laughs> you know? Andy Webb has a lot of experience at this. You spend two years trying to get the kid to walk, and then you gotta chain him down. <laughs> Uh, so, you got to treat a person you sponsor like a newborn baby, and the analogy is very, very accurate. Uh, when they get to be five or six, you can't leave for three weeks. When they get to be adolescents, that's when they're really problematic. You got you to be there for them. That's what it's all about! You see? You don't sponsor somebody and make 108 grand. <laughs> okay, so you prospected by having possibilities and cultivate them. Possibilities lead to prospects. This is a great discovery. I don't sign people up. I get them to lead me to people. Why do I want to sign somebody up who can't lead to anybody? 
So they prove that they will cooperate. I'm making it happen, and they led me to the person that I needed. And here's what I say to them when I get to. Who's going to sponsor these people, you or me? Well, that one will hit you on the way home. What am I doing? I'm going too slow, I know that. Sponsoring is the process of mentoring, coaching, and doing it with them. And using the ABC pattern and the four C's to maximize the quality of time and the duplication. I do this scientifically, not haphazardly. And I always, always, always get a director, period. So, you know, I'm trying to tell you how I do it. But at any rate, some people do it once by accident. There's a few of us that have done it over and over and over. You can drop us into any town. 90 days later, we'll have a, a circle of influence and people, and they, we'll get them leading the people, and we'll, we'll have a supervising coordinator in there inside a year. You know, Jackie Blasco, you know, uh, Frank and Gingy. No doubt about it. They've done it many times. They're proven performers, not lucky ones. And, you know, it is what it is. So we got these things. You know, uh, not too long ago, everything was snail mail, decade ago, email, then texting, social media. And we're at a point where, that we didn't have back when we started, where you can do a lot. You can uh, make friends, you can, you know, meetings and gatherings, share like interests, link up and exchange contact, and now you can keep in contact with people and tease them, you know, uh, uh, inspire them, motivate them, become friends. This is incredible. I used to have to talk at one, to one person at a time and call them up, dial up, or go see them. Now we can stay in communication with hundreds of people and impress them, you know. So all of these things are now working for you. If you apply them to the queue, you're multiplying the value of the Q exponentially many times. Are you getting that? Do you see that? Do you understand it? We didn't used to have that. So I want to be competitive. Look, Vince, like uh, Newt Rockney in the game of football, I think he coached for Notre Dame, um, introduced something new to football. The forward pass. You know, football came from rugby. And they didn't have the forward pass. So everybody was pissed off. He can't do that because he was just killing everybody. Well, they went to the rule book and there was nothing that uh, prevented it. He was innovative. So guess what? Everybody else had to learn how to get a quarterback and do it too because they couldn't win without it. So ultimately, at some point, if you're going to succeed, you have to adopt the most modern technologies and techniques in order to be competitive and win. And that's what we're doing. So the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This doesn't happen all at once, it's a process. You decide and you take that first step and that second step. You know, I've been on this journey for 40 years. I started when I was 10. So what does it take to grow the business? See, uh, what must you do to hit levels? And you know, the answer is more customers, more volume, more UFOs, duplicating that multiplies it. Common sense, right? But it's a process and it comes down to mastery of the fundamentals, discipline, discipline, discipline. It's a matter of focusing on what works and disciplining yourself to do it. So, you know, we had no magic technology, this group and us. We did it the old fashioned way. Boy, I mean, if I could put the time in that I put in back then, God forbid what would happen. No, God bless what would happen. But uh, because you can model, you can do so much more at once. And so, you know, we built this way. It's the old way. Okay, and because of digital tools, you know, social media, GMTSS, global cross-pollination, uh, what we did at one at a time, you can do 10 to 100 at a time. Did you hear that? But you got to get it right first. 
Then you can do it 10 times over because of all the digital mechanisms. Uh, so I went through it detailed. Now look, I'm, you're going to get this, or you're able to get it, and you study it. But I mean, I just you know, just one example showing the plan. You had to memorize the plan, memorize it, and get up on a marker board and draw it out. And then to follow up, you had to go see them and draw it out again, and draw it out again, and teach them how to draw it out. That alone is a great example, isn't it? Volume. You got to know what your volume is, right? You got to know what your group volume is. You would have to, on Thursday, call everybody in the group to know if you were close or what you needed to do to hit a bracket or hit a check. Do you hear that? Well, what this does, it goes through what the method is today and how much quicker and faster and how much more we can leverage is. And on every function in the business, you know, trainings and requirements, weekly communication, building at a distance, retail, it, it's multiplied exponentially what you can do today. So becoming a hopeless success is what I call it. Because if you do what I show you and have fun with it, uh, it's, it's not even up to you. Because what we do when we start prospecting and recruiting and working as a team and doing the ABC pattern, you don't, it's really not what you did, it's what I did. You just got in the way. But if you cooperate and learn it, you're gonna be huge. So, you be, so I say people become a hopeless success by doing this. So you gotta get clear about the business. Look, just figure it out. What's the alternative? What else are you going to do that's going to change your life? Okay? And get proud of the business. You don't have to apologize for it. I like what Fat Joe talked about. Some guy, he's in that marketing thing. He said, you're doggone right I am. Because it's the only thing that can help people on the street and change people's lives. I mean, you know, you got to feel like that. It's all reflected in belief. And look, just look around. I mean, it's been going on for a while. It's all over mainstream news. They want to finish you. They don't care about you. They ain't going to help you. Look at it. This is mainstream establishment talking about it. That was a while ago. It's all over the, the, the internet now. Every article about the middle class dying and you know, people not being able to make ends meet. Yeah, we got a job, but we, you know, we're, we're, we're miserable. You know, it just goes on and on and on and on. Top publications, digital blogs. I mean, I, it's just amazing. So, look, ladies and gentlemen, you have the answer. You have the solution. And all those sophisticated, know-it-all, big shots, they can't help anybody. But you got the answer. So, you know, when you feel like this and know this and come from this type of belief, you become magnetic. You attract people. And it, it just becomes natural. I know this. If somebody is not sponsoring, there's a problem with their belief, period. Because it's impossible not to sponsor when you believe. Because you can't get in a conversation that it doesn't go up or where they eventually ask you what you do. And what do you do? Say, oh, I'm in one of those things. <laughs> well, what, what is it? Oh, well, you know, selling a kind of, but we have we have uh, website marketing. <laughs> yeah. Do you sell anything? Oh, I sold a box of my mother-in-law, but she returned it. <laughs> well, you making any money yet? Oh, not, not yet. <laughs> but if you get in, I know I'll get rich. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Isn't that what people do? You got to get proud of it, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to apologize for a million dollar business. Besides that, what do you got that's any better? Your job? 
you know? I don't want to do the clothes now. But, uh, <laughs> but these are the points. You can read them faster than I can say them. But that's becoming a master recruiter. It's what we do. It's what we do. Every day I get up. It's impossible not to recruit because everybody has problems. Everybody has situations, and I got the solution. You know, the only reason you don't tell somebody is because you don't like them. <laughs> you know, uh, so if you do these things, there's going to be more people that become go nows in every group where it multiplies exponentially and you can't stop it. A lot of these people, when we have competitive problems or things go wrong, they don't even know who their people are anymore. But see, it's, to me, it's not about chasing BB. It's about that person and their life and their belief in what we do and how hard they're trying. I'm not gonna let somebody kill that, you see? But it gets to the point where you don't even know who's in your group. And that will happen. It happened to these guys, you know. But you got to do these things. I mean, they're right up here in front of you. I'm writing them out. Well, so here it is. I'm going to do this again. Watch this slide. Watch it carefully. Okay. We searched infinity. You do two a week for 52 weeks, 104. And even though you stink at this, you get eight. Besides that, you had some help. So you're going to either balance it for two on the weak leg, six on the, I mean, two, two on the strong leg, six on the weak leg, whatever you got to do, four and four. But the next person is going to do two a week to evaluate the program because they might know the right people times 52 weeks, and they're going to get eight. A lot of people, if you're good, you'll get 20 or more. But two, eight, well, I mean, if you get, when you're, when, when you're at the, the, the crop table, you got a hot roll, you don't lower your bets and do less. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. And when you're hot in the business, you don't, don't stop. You go all in, all the way up. <laughs> Yeah? Uh, so you got, you got, so they do eight and eight. And we, through using the, the getting started guide and measuring, monitor, adjusting, controlling, and working the ABC pattern where I'm down in there with them, each one gets eight. If you only get two, they will duplicate it. And after a while, the thing just fizzles out. Okay, so look at this. At the end of a couple months, a month, you have 200, three months, 256 people in each leg versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine people in the leg. Now, what type of difference in the marketing plan does 256 people make versus nine? You put the same amount of time in. the same amount of time, which would you prefer, your way or my way? Uh, so you can't do this in multi-level. You can't do it because the people will fall off the other end. You can't manage them. You can't handle them. Listen to me. You're spread too thin. You're driving all over the place. They're all in competition. It doesn't work. But we're genius. We can do eight, 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 and eight because we're vertical marketing. And I put one under the other, and they all learn together, benefit together, get 100% of each other's production without any dilution. And I'm teaching them all at once. So we used to have to sponsor in a traditional program 12 or more, 
minimum of six to make less money than you can make here on two. Um, so the genius was, the reason we did it was we can make more money with more synergy, more teamwork, less competition, and we didn't need masses of asses in order to make a lot of money. And it increased the individual probability of success. But that doesn't mean that you stop at two now. You still do the eight. You get it? So the multiplier. When you do this, and you get two, get eight, 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 get eight right? You're going to max out a center within a year. Max out a center. Now, it used to be, I look at Yarley, I know him so well, his, his mind, you know, he's crunching the numbers, saying, how did he come up with 4,200? Because if you do the shopping annuity, you get a leadership bonus for the shopping annuity too. And 3,600 and 600 is 4,200, so the potential is higher even now. <laughs> Sorry, but you're gonna max that out. So now you got your two and your three, but now if you, correctly build the 001 so that that person is making more money than they're willing to give up. Going forward, you will only ever have to build one leg in order to make another 218 grand or max out at 4,200. One more leg. You understand that? So you finish your two, your three, then you re-enter, but if you did it correctly, you have volume underneath that, you only gotta build one more leg. See, the reason this works is I'm not some guy that started some company to take advantage of people. I'm an unfranchised owner. I did it for me, you see? Um, so the answer, I mean, you know, I do all this talking and the time doesn't go by that fast on this clock. I keep getting worried that I'm not gonna get done, but anyway. The plan was designed, I think that they might have moved it back or something. The plan was designed as a vertical plan uh, where we profit in depth. So you used to have to build profitability in width, and security was depth. Almost impossible to do both at the same time. And the wider you went, the more groups collapsed. But now we do both at once. We build profitability in depth and security in depth, and that's what works in real life. You see, uh, it's in line with reality. Excuse me, when I shout, it's because I'm passionate about this, because we got the answer, you see? And, you know, it's amazing. Everybody gets 100% credit for everybody's work and orders with no dilution. You know what no dilution means? If I'm getting 10%, in order to pay you something, you get 8%. For you to have somebody under you, uh, uh, and for them to get something, they get 6%. All the way down to the last person who gets 2%. Because we run out of money. But we have an algorithm and a mathematical formula that's genius. We figured it out. That allows us to give 100% based on economies of scale. Every product that you buy, the price that you're getting would require buying economies of scale, 100, a lot of volume. But we're giving it to you on one and storing it and giving everybody else that. But of course, you've got to build a second leg. What does that do? Mathematically, that exponentially increases it, it doubles it. This plan, mathematically, is a work of genius. Uh, you don't even understand some of the things. Like people think, oh, I gotta do 50 bucks a month. No, you gotta retail 200 a quarter. So 50 bucks a month is 150 per quarter because if you turned in form 1000s and did 200 and retailed it, where did the product come from? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I go on and do a whole seminar on this, that stuff. But at any rate, uh, you can max out and earn on three BDCs of 218 grand. And when you have four legs and three of them going, you're 01, 02, and 03, 655 grand. Where else are you going to make that money? 
How, where else could you ever possibly make it? There's no reason you can't do it here except you're lazy or don't do quality time. You see, and it all comes back down to filling the beans. You don't get two people and try to get them in. They can sense your desperation. They don't want to be around you. They hide. You ever experience that? You fill the bean jar first with possibilities. And you shake it, and the nuts rise to the top, and they have to qualify themselves and recruit you to get in. You know, the way I do it, I never have to ask somebody to sign up. There, you're shaking it. I never have to ask somebody to sign up. Because we fill the bean jar, shake the nuts, the nuts come to the top, and I don't let them in until we make it work. They gotta go through a tryout. It already worked. We got 15 people under them, and they're begging, when can I get the product? When can I sign up? When can I get my fast card? I got card, I gotta shop online. So, well, you know, I don't know about all you guys, but you want credit for it, we're gonna have to have a sign up night. Next night we have a sign up, you got all these tools to do it even remotely. Presto, they're a master coordinator, an executive coordinator instantly. Oh, Santa Claus is real. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm telling you, I love this business. Fill the funnel, use social media, exponentially increase it. We didn't have that advantage. We had to go to shopping malls and find people to talk to. <laughs> it's amazing. It's become a master coordinator. Simple. Be aware of it. People are always complaining. Be friendly. Three foot rule. What do you talk about? Family, occupation, recreation, which leads to money. People talk about three things. Every conversation, try this out. Try it for one week. Test it, do an experiment. Just go around and coffee shop, whatever, people say hello, hello, how you doing? They chit chat first about what's happening. Oh, do you hear this happen in the news? Or these people got killed by ISIS or this or that, you know. So they talk about what's happening, right? Do you agree? And then, oddly enough, they cannot leave the conversation without complaining or wishing, 100% of the time. Okay, 98%. Look, are you listening to me? Here you got this person who's complaining to you. Oh, I can't stay my job. You know, they make me work overtime every day and they don't pay me, you know, they pay me less, you know, whatever it is. Or I wish I could have a sailboat like those people out there. Man, that would be the life of Riley for me. <laughs> Every time, day, what are you doing? You have the solution. Am I, am I making any sense? I mean, so I deal with large, I mean, if you can't develop possibilities, you don't believe. Either that or you're comatose. Okay, I don't know where I was, but setting up appointments or passing out information is part of the process. A master recruiter is an information supplier. I'm feeding their mind. I'm deciding what they need to see. I'm listening to them. We have so much content, cool stuff, motivating stuff, insightful stuff, that I'm just gonna keep the Chinese Drip test. We'll get you to wake up and come our way eventually. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm saying that with tremendous respect. Just a little bit every day. A little bit every day. Finally, they said, wow, I get it. Yeah, well, anyway. Right. People say, you gotta get Chinese people to build this business anymore. I say, no, no. You just got to do what the Chinese people do. Mm -hmm, that's right. You know? <laughs> so at any rate, 
So this one, this one, I love. I think that Elizabeth Weber came up with this, or somebody in her group. Um, it's a 10, where is the slide? The 10 3 2 system. Basically, the same thing I'm saying. She had to phrase it a different way because she was already at direct, executive director or field vice president or something. You know, so at any rate, it's the same thing I'm saying, so I like it. <laughs> you know, so uh, so at any rate, talk to 10 people a day. I'm only saying talk to two a week. She had higher standards because she was in a hurry. You know, three appointments a day, add two people to your names list. So five days a week, you got the weekend to catch up, uh, you double any day that you fall short, there's consequences for not doing it. And you're gonna hold them accountable. And you decide the time period. And then we use all the tools behind that. See, back then we didn't have all these tools. There's things that you can stimulate people's minds with. You are like a doctor doing mind surgery. They're your patient. You have prescriptions, but you gotta know what the prescriptions are to treat their thinking, the mind. And I simply prescribe the right video, the right audio, the right digital presentation. And I don't have to go give it to them. We just have to buy boxes full of tapes and carry them around with us. Spend thousands of dollars, loan it out and then go get it back. You can click, click and send it to them. And then you can get on and ask some questions about it. Say, I'm gonna call you about that. Make sure you look at it. I wanna discuss it with you. Oh, it's incredible. So the business used to be hard. But over the last couple of years, we did all these things to make it easier. You know, uh, direct deposit, you know, shop buddy, getting started guide, free shipping for customers are under 99, shopping annuity, SABP gets it for free for a year. Modus Mobile, shopping annuity bonus program, fast start kits. People used to spend hours picking out product. They don't know the product anyway. Just tell me what to order. You know, you uh, have media mobile to feed your mind. Product, I mean, all these things make the business exponentially easier today. So you can grow faster. So what's your excuse? You know, so we have goals, we have deadlines, we stay focused, we document, okay? Uh, and it's all about duplication. And I mean, this is repetitive. But it, you know why it's repetitive? Because you gotta get it. Um, you know, so I developed the, the approach, it's a top 10 list, I use three-way calling. And Elizabeth developed this. A lot of people, when they go to call people, they get blown out by the person because it's somebody they respect and they start beating them up. Well, they ain't gonna beat Elizabeth up, they ain't gonna beat me up. So I know something about that person, I can help guide it. Because if your friends are like my friends, they don't think I know nothing. Do your friends think you know anything? My friends think I'm an idiot. <laughs> right? But if I introduce them to Frank Kiefer, wow, that's Moses, man. <laughs> you know? Do you get what I mean? So you use third-party credibility. You know, um, so these are the points. It's almost methodical. I mean, I'm doing these automatically. I work the ABC pattern. Man, I'm, it, it, that's like football. You get first downs to score touchdowns. Did I get to the first down? It's like baseball. I'm on first base, I gotta get to second base. I'm gonna steal it. <laughs> Do you get it? That's how we progress. It's the measurements. It's the game. 90-day follow-up with a new distributor. I'm sitting them down and going over their goal statement, their action plan. They now have some people. I measure, I monitor, I adjust and control. I'm measuring what's going on. I'm aware of who they're talking to, their possibility list, their prospect list, their action plan. And I, get, I, I go through these nine steps, and then I repeat them 
and duplicate them with somebody at the bottom. So recruiting is shaking the bean jar, filtering through the funnel. It tells you who the good people are. And then we do a trial run. Now listen to this one carefully. I will not sign them up without a tryout because it decreases my quality of time. The process is used to see if someone is right for the business and if the business is right for them, through which they will lead to potential prospects and customers or in the final process, disqualify themselves. Sorry, you didn't make the team. Not everybody gets into Harvard. Don't feel bad. So I determine who they need. I, I put them through the shopping annuity because when people have never, never been in the business and aren't mentally constipated or programmed the wrong way, it's real hard to undo programming and reprogram people. They get it right away. Um, <coughs> so I expose the business. They're just getting people over to evaluate it because they might be the right people. Uh, there's no pressure. I determine if they know the right people. We test market some products. They try them out. What happens when they try them out? Yeah, I mean, they get wrecked. They love them. And so that person that I have is a qualified person. And if I know if they're right for the business and if the business will work for them. Uh, and shopping annuity approach is automatic. I got to speed up here. So I, I'm not going to go into much depth as I have been. But at any rate, uh, you can always find through the people that you're bringing in. Listen to this. You may not know them, but you can always, always, always find through the people you're bringing in, people who are entrepreneurial. Everybody knows one, right? Uh, people with network experience, okay? Uh, people with direct sales experience, people that are well-connected, people with an ambition that want to enhance the, the quality of their life. This is what a trial run does. It opens the doorway through that person to those people. I don't expect them to go out. What do you expect somebody to do when you show them the plan? When can I have a follow-up? Can I buy a ticket to the seminar? <laughs> I will make a list for you and you will help me call them. Is that what you expect? They don't know what to do. <laughs> you gotta laugh, right? So I work through them and find great people because I'm coaching them. You know, this. Like, let me call them with you, okay? And now that I got four people in and meetings booked on the next level, you know, I ask them, who's gonna sponsor these people, you or me? It's that simple. So, uh, prospect chooses a two to three year plan over the 45 year plan. That's all I need to know. See, I close them in the beginning of the meeting, not the end. A lot of people don't like to do that, but I'm gonna make them choose. A lot of people like to avoid it or candy coat it or dance around. I mean, you're 30 years old, you're broke, you got credit card debt, you know? You got 25, 30 years to go, and you're gonna be broke. You know, your job is so good, and your plan is so good. Do you want the two to three year plan or the 45 year plan? You already got lots of experience with the 45 year plan, and no, that don't work. Do you prefer the two to three year plan? Because if you can't make that decision, you don't qualify, period. You know? So one person will give uh, referrals. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If they are interested, I'll come back to them and say, you know, thanks a lot for giving me, you know, Bob Smith, he's really good. He's very interested. You know, I feel an obligation, however, to come back to you and offer you the opportunity to get credit for it. They provide, I provide them more information because they're interested, but they're like a detail person. And they gotta know more, they're an engineer. We gotta figure this thing out, you know? Uh, 
I go to see people with them. All I want them to do is lead me to that person. I remember the day that Pam and Tony Bowling made a rendezvous with Frank and Gingy Kiefer at the, in, where was that place? Huh? Okay. I thought it was somewhere else. Where was it? Where we used to have the regionals. But at any rate, it was a great meeting. Now, you know, Tony and Pam were kind of new in the business. They're all pros, though, but they're smart. They got Frank and Gingy in front of me, and we worked them over, and that's a lot to work over. Uh, but you see, he brought me to the person he wanted to get in. Do you get that? So that's, you know, it isn't about having a meeting and signing people up. You know, uh, so we might have a meeting around a kitchen table. That starts the ABC pattern. We might have a home kickoff. All I want to do is whatever where their head is, I'm going to match it to get them to lead the people. You get that? Okay? So you become a master recruiter by doing all these things. You know, the answer to what is it? Uh, shopping annuity. God, I'm going to have a problem here if I don't keep moving because I got some good stuff, you know. Marketing, uh, Market America, what is it? Do you have the answer? It's a product brokerage internet marketing company that specializes in one-to-one -one marketing and social shopping. Do you understand that? No, well, we got to get together then. You know, shopping annuity. Have you ever heard of it? And they ask, what is it? Here's, what, here's listen, I've had this, I've been doing this business for a long time and I'm really good at it. Great thing about it, in athletics, the older you get, the, 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 the worse you get because you, you fall apart. In this business, the longer you're at it, the better you get at it. And you can keep playing. So I love the shopping annuity because it gives me a new thing that's more powerful than anything. And that's why I started the company and it took 23 years to get here. Now I can play, <laughs> you know? So I wear the shopping annuity uh, T-shirt. You know why? I wear it everywhere. I have 20 of them. I get new ones every week. I wear them, throw them away. You know, I'm going to start doing the tag thing, you know. It's so new, it's still got the tag on. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, I, they, so they see it, they say, this happens to me no less than four times a week. They see it and they say, well, what's a shopping annuity? Aha, uh -huh. they, they bit the hook, the bait. <laughs> now, when, you, when, when, when a fish hits the hook or the bait, you, you don't want to jerk it. Or you'll strip the bait and lose the fish, right? Slowly bring it in. Let him think he got it. So... You know, I tell them it's the best kept secret in the world at the moment. You know, it's a, the next game changer like social media was five or ten years ago. And it's where you convert spending into earning. You know, and uh, they look at me, sp convert spending into earning. I say, well, you know what a financial annuity is, right? Yeah, they don't. I explain how they work. And I, I said, you know, the, 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 uh, the thing is that here, you don't have to invest any money. And your spending and shopping funds the annuity. And the annuity yields more than a regular financial yield, uh, annuity. And it's inheritable. Wow. So, uh, uh, you know, so, but, and I do this a little different every time. It's never the same. But, uh, you want to be interested, though, because you don't need to save money uh, or make money on, on your spending. You're satisfied. I'm taking it away from them. I'm not so anxious to jump all over them, like a big St. Bernard lap dog and slobber all over them, you know? So, uh, so they start recruiting me. Are you reading this? You know? Uh, I give them a link or to a video or shoppingannuity.com and take their email or cell phone you know, number, text number, say, I will send you some information. Now I got their information. You, you get that? That got me their information. Have you ever heard of it? And the answer is no. Well, you will. You know, it's a movement and a re revolution. Have you ever heard of shop.com? And so it doesn't matter how they answer. 
The point is, it starts this process of, uh, of talking in themes. So you don't have to be canned. You learn how to talk in themes, the themes about the business, on franchise, you know, one-to-one -one marketing. And they ask questions, and you just lead them around because you know what you're talking about. Do you understand this? You know, so... Uh, Okay, so we'll teach uh, people how to make a residual income doing this. I gotta move on. Okay, I'm gonna pop through some of these because I got some other really important stuff, but I'll at least let you take a little trailer here. So we learn to speak fluent market America by knowing the topics. If you know the topics and can talk about them, they ask questions. One theme leads to another, and it's just like dancing, you know? Yarley, you know how to do this, <laughs> you know? So, uh, <laughs> you, you, you get my point? Okay, so, um, you speak in fluid America, plan B, unfranchised versus franchise, OP3, or a product opportunity. You know, young entrepreneurs that are getting into this, one-to-one -one marketing, the university majors and product. So you learn how to talk in themes, you know? There's a tape on it, an audio on it, an audio on it that you should listen to if you don't understand it. This is what makes you good at it. This is what makes you good at it. This is what makes you good at it. Do you want to be good at it? Uh, so we connect the themes. One theme leads to another, and after a while, you just dazzle people. You know, it's a lot of fun. So whatever I'm talking about, uh, when, when I used to build with Elizabeth Weber and she used to come to Ocean City, New Jersey, we used to go down the boardwalk and she was like a human vacuum cleaner. She actually embarrassed me. <laughs> I mean, she was ridiculous. Every single person she would walk up to and start talking and they'd say, well, what do you do? And she says, well, I teach people how to make money. 2,100 a week. <laughs> I mean, and so I say we teach people how to make money doing that, whatever the, the dialogue, conversation, themes were, and I wait for them. If they don't say, well, how do you do that? Or, you know, I'd be interested in that. They don't qualify. So, you know, you become a master recruiter by putting the information in people's hands when they started to come after it because you can't explain it all then, right? And when you, when you do the Amway type of thing where you keep it a secret and a mystery and all that, that don't work too good this, in this day and age. I gotta give them some information. I'm not ashamed to talk about what I'm doing. You know, so we have all these tools to do that, don't we? All these tools to, to stay connected. All these tools to impress them. We didn't have any of that. We had to all do it ourselves. So what can you do? I hope you're getting this point. Tools, getting started guy, keeping everybody on track. Flipchart, job.com, all the custom websites, you know? Uh, so I'm collecting information. It's amazing what people will tell you. People's favorite topic is themselves. Ask them, they'll tell you. <laughs> so I just get them talking. They load me with information. They tell me what their pain is. They tell me what their passion is. Those are the secrets that I need to know in order to be a master recruiter. Okay, so, uh, and everybody talks about what's happening, what they wish and what they complain. The complaining part or the wishing part's the information I need to get them into business because they have no way of doing it, right? You know, so how do you get people to show the plan? I use a commentator routine. As I'm doing the ABC plant pattern, I get them to show part of it, but it's like in sports, one guy calls the play, another guy adds the color, right? So I'm filling in, and it makes them look good, and they get confidence. So I put it all together. I use all these things together, and I have all these tools to impress them, and I'm doing it all the time. It's easier than ever. You just gotta focus on it and do it. And I do one-on-ones, two-on-ones. We retail to recruit because the product gets people in. And I ask questions and I listen. 
and I use the recruiting tools. And, you know, so all of this starts to come together. I use the downline or the new junior partners to lead me to the rock stars. Everybody knows one. Are you hearing this? They're afraid to talk to them, but they'll let you talk to them. That's easier than going on the street and finding people, you know. So I just have a conversation, you know. I talk about, they, they, they say they want to know who I am. Why do they want to know who I am? Because I'm flamboyant. I'm excited. I'm funny. I'm like Dave Chappelle. You know? I, and I make them laugh. And they say, who are you? And I started a billion dollar company by accident. <laughs> I got into the ground floor of a billion dollar company with a shopping annuity. And it happened by accident. You know? I talk about the movie example, about how we got the idea for the company. You all know the movie example, right? You know? And th that, that's what brings them in. So then I'm counseling people. I'm brainstorming with them to find out who they do know and how I can help them talk to them. You know? I get people to bird dog. You know what a bird dog is when you're hunting? The, bird, the dog points and he brings back the bird. You know, so I teach through the evaluation approach. The evaluation approach is everything, the back door method. I don't go in the front door, I go in the back door. I don't go in the front door. I go in the back door. Maybe you can help me out. You may or may not be interested in yourself, but if nothing else, you might know the right person. But I realize that you're not going to recommend anyone without knowing more about it. That's why I'd like to get together with you over a cup of coffee for 30 minutes to show you our plans and to see if you might know someone that would fit the description. If you identify the right person, it could, be, it could mean a significant amount of money to you. That's called an offer too good to refuse. You understand how that is accomplished, right? You like this? Is this helping? You know, so I got more tricks than the bag will fit, but uh, I got to get past this. So at the end of the day, all that belief is fantasy. The reality of the business is right here. I'm going to get them here. I'm going to get them here because it accomplishes a year worth of work and traveling and trying to get them to grasp what no other way they could grasp it other than being here. It's the shortcut to success. Um, the only one. The only shortcut to success. And hey, you cannot lead where you will not go. You know all your people that didn't come? We all got them. I got them too. It pisses me off. I'll tell you why. I, it takes too much time to explain all this stuff to them. Uh, well, at any rate. And for, if you want to have somebody that potentially could become a star overnight and become a director, bring them to one of these. Um, it's, it's a shortcut to success. So you cannot lead where you will not go, and you cannot teach what you will not, you do not know. Bottom line. Uh, so the business and plan are much easier to build today. Um, you know, it, it, with all the automation, tracking alerts, and system, it's just easy. And we have all these things that we didn't have before, so you can increase the quality of time and duplicate faster. So these guys did without it, what's your excuse? They did it without it. And you know, the things that we have that track, that alert, that help you figure things out, the ability to provide information and prescriptions of audios to people, and you control it. This person gets that, this person gets that, this group needs this, it can work wonders. And the same thing with meeton.com, the digital NMTSS. If I'm doing a coring, I got people all around the world. I can't get to them all. My big problem is I can't be everywhere at once. But with meat on, I can. It's the digital NMTSS. So here's the four C's now. You really, now you know how to do it. 
The question is how to do more of it in less time. Right? Now you know how to do it. How do I do more of it in less time? Uh, and I'm going to have to jump to the skit in four minutes, okay? Okay, so the four C's are counselings, corings, combinations, and cross-pollination. Now, if you get it, I filled the bean jar. We're doing two a week. I have plenty of people coming in. I have legs that are growing. It uses up all available time very quickly. So how can I get more done in less time? Well, it's the four C's. Now watch this. I really become a scientist now, okay? I really get the microscope out. And for instance, on one night, I'm doing a meeting, a test market meeting, a, a trial run on, you know, the 002 down there at the bottom of the leg. I have another person that, that I'm working the ABC pattern with. So I bring them there with a person because I was out of nights. They help the meeting and they learn because they see what I'm doing, okay? Uh, uh, I have another new person that I bring there. I follow up with the person in the right leg on the left side of the three. I said, look, I'll pick you up and take you to the meeting and we'll follow up a afterwards. I bring a new person. Okay, this other person brings a new person. I take the right leg and I have a re-entry going there. And so I invite them to that meeting. So now I'm doing uh, uh, the ultimate leverage routine. I'm working three or four legs per night. When I go to a meeting, and I say, how many legs I got here tonight? Three, woo, I'm good, <laughs> you know? And I recruit, train, and retain all at the same time. Recruit, train, and retain. Because I'm building under them and I'm educating them all the time. They get so much information and are so enamored by everything that, that they're deeper than they can get out. You know, and uh, I wonder what would have happened if I stayed with him. I might have been rich. You're right. I plug people in. It's a credibility duplicator. Now, cross-pollination works like this. If you live in Bodunk, Maine, or whatever, you know, Timbuktu, which is a real place, uh, Michigan, you can't keep it there. It's impossible. People know people in the next town, people have relatives, and it starts to spread into other places. The question is, I can't go to all those places. That's why we have the GMTSS. But if I have to leave Tony's group and go work in Elizabeth's group, it doesn't benefit Tony. That's a night away from you. I'm robbing you. You have to get people in Boston because I'm going there because I got to be working your business when I go to Boston. So let's get everybody together and run a drill to find out who they know or who they know that knows somebody and get some people in Boston so that I can build your group in Boston. Then I tell Elizabeth, listen, I wish I could spend more nights with you because I say you're really, you're really hot. You're really, and I don't mean it that way, but really, <laughs> which you are. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I, you're, you're red hot and rolling, baby. I, I, you need more of me. So I need you, you must find people in Baltimore. And she gets people. And so when I go to Tony's meeting, I'm working both their groups in two locations. And when I go to Elizabeth's uh, meetings, I'm working both Baltimore and Boston at the same time in two different legs. You get that? Pretty simple. Okay, so the difference between counselings and corings. At every step of the game, somebody does not know what to do. All the time, people are missing the next step. Groups of people at different stages of the business need different things. The whole key is sitting down with a person or a group of people and providing them what they need to know in order to duplicate 
rather than dealing with the problem and having it unquality the time. I love that thing, no, don't understand, overstand. Yesterday? When you understand something that's under, what we want to do is overstand it. <laughs> okay. Well, the number of people. Okay. So, if one person needs something, I'll do a counseling with them, especially if they're key to getting the leg going. If the group is at a certain stage where they don't understand why they have to buy tickets, or they don't understand the ABC part, or they don't understand the shopping annuity, or we need to do assessments, I get the group together, I bring it back to its core, and I teach what they need to duplicate all at once. And so that, now when I put the two together, watch this, combinations and cross-pollination. They're different. In one town, I'm combining different legs into one meeting. If I have uh, a, a group and it's starting to branch off, they now, there's now four branches, we've got follow-ups. I'll get everybody that's booked for the Friday night, they can bring people or invite people to the Monday night meeting in somebody else's leg. So every night I'm working all four branches. Is, is this making any sense? Okay, so the principle is to leverage through cross-pollination and combinations, making the quality of time exponentially more valuable. So in running an organization, okay, as I do this, I'm combining beliefs. I am doing brain surgery all the time with this person. They got to believe in themselves. I'm building them up. They got to listen to audios. They got to believe in the company. They got to believe in the products. And they got to believe in the line of sponsorship, the line of leadership. So I'm edifying and building up those people. And the why it works is when I build each one of you up and we talk about the line as we do the ABC pattern, when you come in, all of a sudden you're a star. Oh my God, that's Yardley. He's the guy they talked about. Man, he's really doing this thing. He's just started. But they listen to you, you know. So what happens when people listen to you? Huh? So I build credibility. I make it about them. I edify the junior partners and encourage them and say, hey, Yarley just got started, but he's going to show part of the plan tonight. He's really smart. He's really going. So I build event to event, counseling, coaching. These are all the things that I use to manage an organization to increase the quality of time. So they got to have goals. No use doing it if they don't have a goal. Not only do they have to have a goal, they have to know how they're going to get there. We have to break it down so that they can accept it. And when they can accept it, it becomes their identity. And then it's going to materialize. So I got to get through some of these. I'm a, you know, oh, by the way, when somebody plateaus out, it's always, 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 always dead battery. Too many problems, not enough positive input into their brain. So you better get some in there. They stop sponsoring, and they're not doing the ABC pattern. I don't care what you say, I know. You know, audios, why people need them? Because you can't explain everything to everybody, and they got to be feeding their brain and their mind all the time. What would happen if you didn't eat for a month? No wonder your brain is starved. I listen to an audio every day for 40 years. Every day for 40 years. Because I steal information. Originality is concealing your source. I get good stuff and I use it on people. I say, ooh, that's good. After a while, nobody knows whose material is whose material. I tell a joke and somebody else tells the same joke at the same meeting because they weren't listening to me tell it. You know, I, they stole it from me and it was okay because originality is concealing your source, but you did it at the same meeting. <laughs> you know, at any rate, it's a miracle worker. I didn't realize this was going to take so long. And I, uh, I got to show these slides and I'm going to go to this skit. Uh, I'll put them in the clothes. They're, they're too good. It, it, what this is about 
is the multiplier effect of your time by doing things right, what happens? I'll do it. You work a job, this is the way it is. You know, you work 45 years and you get, end up with half pay at best. You know, uh, you can uh, buy a business, a traditional business, you gotta invest five times the potential net. You don't get your money back, there's a starvation period for five to 10 years, then you don't get your money back. And uh, uh, when, whenever you sell it, you get a little lump sum for the goodwill and whatnot, and then you're broke. You don't have any income anymore, <laughs> you know? Okay, so the basic five is something that we're always drilling in from day one. And we're doing it with them. We're making sure that we're building their attitude and knowledge. We're making sure that they have a goal. Make sure that they're, they're retailing. But the missing one is the ABC pattern for most people. And this is where they, they, they slip. They lose momentum when they should be gaining uh, momentum. Okay, so remember, look at the numbers here. You've been doing it your way. And you think that we make these requirements and programs up to irritate you. This is the bottom line. Look at it. Oh, they skipped over it. What am I supposed to do? They're not going to let me fool around. But look at it. The, the, you're putting the same amount of time in. When you focus on these things, the lift, the increase for the same amount of time is humongous. Why would anyone not want to do what statistically, factually has been proven to be the result? I, I don't understand it. You know, so at any rate, when we do this, I implement combinations and cross-pollinization, but the key is I work at the bottom level. You see that? You don't duplicate from the top down. It gets diluted, distorted, and it doesn't work. If you want to duplicate, you duplicate from the bottom up. And I'm gonna show you that. We always use the getting started guy, okay? And this is the thing that makes it happen where I actually turn somebody into a hopeless success. So where are my senior partners? This is where we start, right? That's correct. That's I'm correct, a little... Okay. Okay, so. So. This is my left leg and right leg. And these guys are not new. They've been in a few months. And I make sure that we exercise the quality of time. And I teach them well. And I, they learn on the job by doing it with me. So they've been doing it with me for a while. But I can't wait to get down underneath them and get a new ABC pattern going so that they can be extremely successful and start hitting levels and director and, 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 and beyond that. So I don't stop just with Andrew, okay? We have Drayton here who started in the business. He's brand new, but he has a great attitude and he's under Andrew. Jim has the same thing going on on the other leg. So the first thing that we're gonna do is shake the bean jar. We're gonna talk about filling it, and he's gonna keep that bean jar throughout the journey, because he's gonna do two every week. But we start out by filling it and shaking it, and if you see up there, this is how we find the right people. We don't put two people in, we fill it with the funnel, okay, and the nuts are in there. By shaking it, they'll rise to the top. Get your nuts out. So I show the plan, I show the plan, the plan is simple. You just follow the PowerPoint. I show the plan, and at the end of the meeting, I have a cue. And I told Andrew and Jim 
he doesn't know yet because he's new, that when I say, don't worry about understanding all this tonight, my goodness, you understood the whole thing, God bless you, the smartest people in the world. That's not the important thing. He chose a two to three year plan over the 45 year plan. The real question is, will it work for you? And we have a way of test marketing to find out if that'll happen. Da, 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 da. When they hear that, they take out their, their calendar, I mean, their electronic calendar, their getting started guide, and they, they turn to the person and say, what did he like best about what you saw tonight? It's like, attention! It's like a military drill, right? And so Andrew does this, and we book, we're gonna have a meeting, and Drayton is you. He represents you. He's the actor, you, but he's doing it in real life. Okay, so you got some nuts? Okay, so he has some nuts, so the people are invited to the meeting. Andrew is there with me. 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 Because that's how he learns, and I need help following up. Now, if Andrew doesn't show up, he will become history. And Drayton will replace him. But Andrew ain't dumb. Okay, so where's the people? So now we have a meeting at Drayton's house, right? Right. That, that's A's house. Right. Drayton's house is here in the middle. Drayton, right here. Drayton's here in the middle. Oh, is he A? Oh, so we already had him. So we have a meeting now at Drayton's house, right? Yeah. So see, this is Drayton, you. We're having a meeting at his house. This isn't A, is it? No, not yet. We're having the meeting at Drayton's house. Okay, so this is Drayton's house. Why is it in front of A? It should be right here in the middle. In the middle, but it's a little too crowded. Okay. So Drayton's good at this. He had a lot of good nuts in the jar, right? So Drayton is the host, okay? And everybody respects him, but they won't listen to him totally because he's their, his, his friend. So Andrew or I show the plan, okay? It's the same plan every time. And at the end of the plan, you know, I say, don't worry about understanding all this. And we're now going to pick somebody. Drayton hasn't signed up yet to go to the next person's house, and they're going to have a bean jar. So, if I flick this side, he has a bean jar, we shook it, these people came from it, and... A nut came to the flipping. top. A nut the nuts came to the top. Here's the biggest nuts out of all the beans. So we're now going to go to the A level. Right, so the biggest nut, right? Rose to the top, and that nut, his that name. That nut is who? Jack. Jack. Who's playing There's Jack? Jack. Uh, now this, this isn't really Jack. Jack isn't his name. He's, he's an actor. He's playing the role, but he's really doing it in real life, right? So now, Jack gets a bean jar. Yes, he does. Because he knows 300 people that I don't know, and that Drayton doesn't know. Does everybody get that? Do you get it? Okay, so we're going to go to Jack's house, which, which is, is A. a correct. Okay, now, we book follow-ups, Andrew and I and Drayton, with as many of these people as we can. Right. And they would go off and do individual follow-ups. But now, with Jack, we're going to go and do a meeting at his house. Why at his house? You go over there. Lead them over there. We're here. We're actually... We're, we're actually okay. We're, Why at his house? Here. Because... There's something magical. I can't really explain it. I don't know what it is, but for 30, 40 years, I've seen something magical happen. When it's in their location or their house, they're kind of taking responsibility for it. They're standing up to the plate, and it's easier for them to get people there. And it's their meeting. It's their business. It does something to the people, and it does something to them. So I always try to get it in the next location. So now we're still doing the so, same. Right, so we're, we had another meeting presentation at Jack's house, and like you said, we were Okay, so him. Jack, shake the bean jar. Shake. These are his people. Right, exactly right. Shake it hard. Shake them up, shake them up. Okay, so get, get, get them out. He's got some nuts. These are his people. That's correct. Okay. Andrew, I think you screwed something up at, at you meeting, but he's so good they came anyway. Okay, so. Uh, we are now at Jack's house, not Drayton's house. Drayton's you. Drayton comes with me. Just a week into business. 
He's excited because we're getting Jack going, right? So we do the meeting. I might have him even do uh, one little part of it. But in, no fear, he's not going to mess them up because I'm the commentator. And they're really impressed that he got up and spoke about it. But he's learning how to show the plan. Okay, so then the meeting, don't worry about understanding all this. You know, we booked the follow-ups, and we're going to go to the next house. So a nut came out of Jack's bean jar, and that nut is Sue, right? So there's a couple of people that weren't necessarily interested. The timing wasn't right, right? So they went off, and we had other people who we came. We didn't follow. Right. Timing wasn't right, timing wasn't or right. we had individual follow-ups. They followed off. So now we're going, you're going to lead him to B house. Go to That's guys. Jack's house. And his nuts are going to come to this meeting. You got the group? Yeah, they're coming. Okay, now, by the way, at any point to help people get the bean jar shaking and get the nuts, we can do a, we can do a, uh, a car workshop. And it always produces a lot of new nuts. But here's the amazing thing that that proves. What I love about the car workshop, it shows two things. One, you haven't been doing two a week. You haven't been doing it. And number two, you can do it. Look at the results. That proves it, doesn't it? Yeah, you catch that one on the way home. Don't worry about it. So the same thing's happening over on this side. So now we're at Jack's meeting. We show the plan at the end of it. Don't worry about understanding all this. Night. My goodness, you understand the whole thing. That's the sign. You're going to pick the best person who's showing the most response. And that person's name is Sue. <laughs> right. There she is. She's right there. Yeah, Sue, wait a minute. We're at Jack's house, and now we, put, we found Sue. There you are. And there's Sue. So we're going to now book the follow-up at Sue's house, and she gets a bean jar. She does get a bean jar. Here it comes. Now, they keep the bean jar with them because they're not done after the trial run. They're going to keep shaking that and adding it's, two it's per week. You get it? Off. When we go there. Okay. So, so we can do a band soon. <laughs> okay, shake it up. So these are her 300 people, her 100 people. There you go. You got some nuts. So we invite the nuts. Me open up. To C's, to, to Sue's house. It's a B level. It's also... Andrew's sea level. Everybody get that? He's his, he's his A, his B, a might be. and C. For him, it's A and B. You get it? Okay, so now what do we do? Now, what came out of her jar is another nut. Right? Another few nuts. A few nuts, nuts, right. Okay, so now we're going to have her people come to her house. This is it, right? Well, then we're going to move along to, this, to the C level and the, to correct. No, we're at the B level meeting right and her, now. Her house. Her nut. This is your house. Right. Man. It's my house. Right there, B. A's house is, is, is Jack's house. Exactly right. In the middle was Dryton's house. He came from somewhere. <laughs> and anyway, <laughs> and now here we go. Uh, we're going to do the meeting at Sue's house. She shook the bean we jar. We finished the meeting. Okay. She invites the people. Are the people here? They're coming out now. The people are Come coming on out. out now. And you guys are getting follow-ups, but Getting follow-ups. Some interested. Some became customers. Some timing wasn't right, but more people became interested. Okay. Now, notice Jack hasn't even made a decision yet. He don't even quite know what's going on, <laughs> but he likes it. <laughs> okay. So now we're at the C house, uh, which is... Matt, our we shook the bean shook jar, the bean jar she and she picked Matt out of that group. The other ones went back. Where's Matt? Come on, Matt. Where's Matt's bean jar? Matt, Matt's bean jar is on the way. So Matt, we wouldn't be doing this with Matt if he didn't have a bean jar and 100 to 300 possibilities, right? And he's going to invite 10 to 20 of them, the best ones. So here comes Matt. Shake your bean jar. We'll help you. Do you need help? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh my God, you got three at once there. That's what we do. Okay, so now we're doing this meeting for Jack. And notice, 
Drayton's there, Jack's there, Sue's there, to help and to learn and to help follow up. Do you get that? I bring them with us. Very, very, very important. Okay, so he's saying that we do the plan for the fourth time. So I go through the plan. Don't worry about understanding all this time. I'm going to understand the whole thing. God bless the smartest people in the world. Da, 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 da. Right? And, and so now, is his people here? Well, Did he invite yes, his people? They Did they are. come they're here. Okay, so you're his people. Not really. You're your own person. But at any rate, here we go. We're going to now go to the next meeting. But some interesting things happen here. At each step, Andrew, myself, and now Jack, as I've explained it to him, are making sure that these things happen. These are the points that increase the quality of time. So it's a checklist, and we're doing them at every meeting. You know, uh, bring your team uh, uh, to, to help, commentator routine. By now, I'm having Drayton definitely show part of the plan, and we're adding in. And uh, we pull out our mobile calendars at the end. I tell them, when I say, don't worry about understanding all this, is attention. What do you like most about the plan? You know, so we ask a leading question, and he knows, watching his friends, who the best one is. And we're going to book that follow-up. We may book follow-ups with other ones. Now, look at this. We book a follow-up for each leg. This might be Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. I only, I, four nights taken up. They're branches off of my left leg. So Andrew and I are booking follow-ups, and now Jack's booking follow-ups. So we have three meetings, okay? So on Monday night with Jack, Sue, and Matt. Matt, <laughs> I, I, you can't remember your own name, neither can I. <laughs> so, uh, they can come to Jack's meeting. On Tuesday night, Jack can use Sue's meeting, right? And on Wednesday, and you can use it too. So I'm working combinations. Every night, there's three branches. I'm working all three of them. Everybody follow that? Okay, so we're now going to go. Oh, by the way, in between, we're following up with everyone. We're introducing them to information sources. Digital brain food. They love it. They get immersed in it, okay? So I can, I can communicate with a lot of people at one time. We set up Facebook groups so they can see what's going on. And how come it's on the B level? We did that. Yeah. So we might be assisting in calls. We're using social media so that everybody can see the action and participate, and we're now on, it's Matt, I didn't click any of these, sorry. But see, everybody's with me. Everybody's coming to us with the meeting. So now, here we are at the sea level. Notice this. Drayton didn't even sign up. He's just going on for a ride, having a ball, a lot of excitement, a lot of stuff. Look, if I tried to sign him up, something might go wrong. I don't even know if he's really going to do a good job. I would never have had all these people. But now I have all these people, I don't have to ask anybody to sign up. Because one person says, hey, I want to buy OPC3. Hey, I want to get paid to shop. I'm going to be, be buying a TV. Hey, when am I going to get my fast start kit? I'm ready to go with this thing. They're all screaming at me. I say, okay, okay, okay. I understand, but you know, if you all want to get credit for what they want to buy, we all have to be in the system. So we're going to have to take a minute and have a sign-up night, okay? So now we can register each person all at once because we have a uh, partner now, and we have the fast start kits. You just have to go through all the products with someone. It took hours to figure out what they wanted to buy. You had to go through all the requirements. I mean, it, it was, and you made all types of mistakes and they had the wrong cue date and, oh, it was a nightmare. Now we can do it instantaneously. We can do it remotely, you know? And we're using the Get It Started Guide every step of the way to make sure everybody's following the roadmap. 
right? Exactly. So they all have the Getting Started Guide, which Andrew's holding. Correct. And we go over it after the meeting. We're using Partner Now uh, and the Fast Start Kit. I can instantly sign them up. So that night, we have a coring. Or if we had to do it remotely, we did. But presto, at the end of that night, Drayton, you, is an executive coordinator, maybe even master. And he asked, presto, Santa Claus is real. <laughs> it worked. OK, so now we're going to go on to the next level. Uh, and that's Joe. And he shook his bean jar. We teach them what to do as we go to these meetings. We have coffee afterwards. We have, you know, counselings afterwards. And they're learning more and more and more, and they're learning it on the job. Okay, so uh, we do the coring. All of a sudden, move that. Uh, now we're going to go to A1. Can you give me A1? A1, one slide back. Okay, so this is Joe. We went through the sea level. By now, Drayton can show the plan, and he dazzles us. We are so excited when he shows it. Wow. You know, and he gets up in front of the room, because I might not be able to be at every meeting now, because I got my other leg. So I tell them, I have to go hold a meeting with my guy, my guy, Jim, in Philadelphia, and you guys are in New York. I can't afford the way we're going, Drayton, to take a night away from you, because we're on the way to you all making money. You have to find somebody in New York. We can go through a drill of who everybody knows, your customers, your relatives, and find someone who will evaluate it because they might know the right people there. You tell them that you're expanding your business there. So when I go over and book this meeting for Jim down on his sea level, because he's red hot and rolling and he has great people, I'm doing the meeting over here, but at the same time, they have people here. So I'm building their group while I'm building this group. Do you get that? Okay, and then Jim, you know, I've been taking a lot of nights away from you guys. So I'm really sorry, but I got this group over there. It's red hot and rolling. This isn't right. You guys have to find people in Philadelphia so that when I am there, I'm building your group here too. Yep. Okay, absolutely. and I'm building both there. So we go through the drill who of you who know, they know. Who do you know in Philadelphia? The, the power you know? networking prospecting drill. Yep. And they now have people at the A1 level meeting. And we're working combinations in the, their town by letting everybody use every meeting. You get that? Okay, so at th this meeting, Drayton shows it. We have a local coming up in days. So every one of them sells and buys tickets. We've talked to the leaders in the leadership line, A, B, C, A1, about that, and where are the, where's the meeting? Let's do the meeting. You want to do the A1 meeting? Where's the chairs? Where's the meeting? Well, the A1, which I think it's like I have Terry. Where's the meeting? A1. Huh? A1 is right here. Move Can't forward. You see it? Okay, come on up, A1. 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 <laughs> this says Joe. Joe, this is your group. This is your meeting. <laughs> There's no more houses, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the A1 meeting. Yes. Now, Drayton, is, he's red hot and rolling. Everybody loves him. He's got the presentation now. You're showing the plan. I'm just filling in. But Andrew's still with me. He's got, the, when I did that meeting over there, Andrew filled in and did what I do. Andrew now has the tickets. Drayton, Drayton bought some tickets. He is a master coordinator. You're an executive. Where, where, where's Jack? Jack's an executive, uh, uh, a, a coordinator. And where's Sue? Sue is a coordinator. This ain't their meeting, but they might come and help out because it's their group, right? 
So we're all working together. Now, but they have other branches, and I'm working combinations to cover the branches. So now we sold them all tickets. Where's the tickets? Don't tell me you forgot them. Ooh, that's a terrible thing. Tickets are on the way. Well, it shows that you can mess up and still correct it. Oh, they got their tickets. Hold your tickets up. There you go. Okay, so now they all got tickets. Did you hear that? They all got tickets. The way I made sure it happened is Andrew bought them and Dryton bought them. They don't have a lot of extra money. That is burning a hole in their pocket. Oh, it burns. They got to get rid of them tickets or they can't cover the check. I'm telling you this. They don't forget to sell the tickets. Now, it's been three weeks. They just all signed up and got their kid. He just hit. And there's a local seminar coming on. Same thing in Jim's group. They've all been sold tickets. I'm not working with everybody. But at that meeting, I'm going to get to meet them all. And they can't wait to bring their people up to me because they're excited about their progress. And I'm going to book and start this whole thing over again under one of them, just like I did with Andrew. Do you follow this? And Andrew's going to start it over again with somebody under them. And here we go. We're at this local seminar, okay, at the local hotel, and two, come on, you, you and Jim are up front. Oh. And we'd sitting, we would like to announce. We're having recognition. I'm this, sitting in the this. back. We'd I'm like to sitting in the back, and Dryton is about to be recognized. At the local seminar. Now, he never made a decision. It just happened. Okay, so introduce him. So we're recognizing Dryton as an executive coordinator or a master coordinator, right? Right. For the first time. For the first time ever. Here you are at the local Dryton seminar. Dryton Hodo, executive coordinator. Y'all team is here. Now, Dryton, Dryton, say a few words, would you? Let me tell you, that JR, he didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> I did it all myself. I did this. <laughs> Let me tell you how I built the business. Let me tell you how I built the business. <laughs> Come to the events, buy your tickets. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, I'm sitting in the back of the room. Tears streaming down my face. <laughs> Another leader has been born. <laughs> so, that's what I want. And that's how it happens. And you can do it. You can do it. This is what you haven't been doing. Can you do it? Yes. Okay. This gives you control over the result. Control over the result. I'm not going to go any further. We're done. And, you know, but I started that bottom. Ah, where is the card at? Where's the card at? The card. The card with my message on it. The card! Yeah. Okay. I have to do a little experiment. Who does this go to? I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you something. A lot of you start with Andrew, tell him what to do, hold a meeting, and expect him to build it. True or false? Hope that he built it. True or false? I know why you had to say true, because if it was false and you did it, you would be a supervising coordinator if you're in one year, or a director if you were in two or three years, and you ain't. And that's why. Your quality of time is lower. You don't want that to happen anymore. You're doing this, right? So I don't duplicate from the top down. The reason they are the way they are and are so good is because I took them through this process already. This is a second round. Andrew knows what to do. He's been on the field of battle with me. He's learned on the job. The only learning is experiential learning. They're totally competent because they did it. They flew the plane. You, you get this? Yep. So. So, uh, by the time 
uh, we get here, it's duplicated. But it didn't duplicate from the top down. Did you see? It duplicated from the bottom up. Are you learning anything? How far along is that uh, question? Okay, so I'm doing a little experiment here. I want to prove to you that even with the best people, when you show the plan and then expect somebody else to show it and somebody else to show it and somebody else to show it, they're passing it down the grapevine, right? And even the smartest, best people, you get dilution and distortion until after a while it doesn't even sound like the same business. They're not selling tickets because they don't understand it. The way they explained it didn't make any sense. Are you guys following this? But if I do it at the bottom, the bottom up, each step I repeat the instructions. I go through the routine. So I gave a, a statement about tonight's presentation to Elizabeth. And she passed the same story down to each one of these. And it got down to Chris. Now Chris, this isn't what he knows, it's what he was told. It's not what he knows, it's what he was told. I told Elizabeth and she passed it down. So what did they tell you? Timing is growth, and that is the potential for everything. <laughs> okay, do we have that slide up there of the, of the statement? That's very good. Now, he, he's been around, he knows the right answer, but he didn't change it, okay? So, can you put it up there, this slide? It's on in front of me right now. Here it is. This is what Elizabeth got. There is a method to the madness based on the time equals growth equals money formula. We can grow exponentially faster by increasing duplication. The shopping annuity makes the MPCP multiply itself uh, squared. <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? These are the best people in the business. <laughs> That's why I got to do it at A, B, C. A1, B1, C1. Then every one of them says it exactly like it is and does it exactly the way I do it. And that's how you make a director in a year. God bless you. Right. Thank you, guys.